What's up everyone? So I'm going to my buddy Lester's house for a session. We're tracking drums for Tim Johnson's new single. It's gonna be a good time. Lester's awesome, the studio's cool. Let's go. All right, so here we be. There's the man. What so up? We, uh, we're working on Pro Tools stuff because uh. there's no such thing as a studio session without having Pro Tools issues. That's right. Because God forbid that the, the industry standard actually work works perfect. trying an uh, HD native. Just the Thunderbolt, right? Yeah, I'm ha I have the Thunderbolt here now. I was on PCIe, which you saw the sonnet down there. Right there, and I was, in pieces. For some reason, I was having issues with that, and I had my uh, UAD Octo card and blah, 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 and it wasn't playing nice at all. So, I went to rack and roll rented this Thunderbolt and uh, we're trying it out now. It's so not pro right now. Colt's being really nice about it. <laughs> the amount of people that have come to my studio and had to put up with me doing the same thing. So it's just, it's but, part of it. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how this goes. Okay. We think the Pro Tools rig is stable. <laughs> we think. So right. let's go track. Yeah, man. Okay. Here we go. Oh. oh, no, wrong one. Oh, crap. My bad. My bad. <laughs> All right, drum room. Uh -huh. What do we got there? I'm a Sabian guy. Oh. Lord. So I'm rocking all Sabian stuff. We got to go look at all the snare drums, though. You have no choice. When you're here, you have to look at all the snare drums. <laughs> What? Unfortunately, my favorite snare drum, it got taken to California. It's a snare drum that's covered in money. <laughs> isn't, there, isn't there a hundred dollar bill in there too? Yeah, it's a hundred and fourteen bucks on there. Hundred and fourteen bucks in a snare drum. But, you know, if you're going to go to L.A., probably ought to take the money snare. Literally the money snare. <laughs> okay, so we are using an Onyx i5 for snare. And Lester's favorite, 421, for <laughs> toms. And we got some nice Sennheisers for overheads. We got Onyx D6s on the low toms and then uh, we got a Coles 4038 and then we got a pair of fat heads out here and then another little pair of Audix way up here what's in the kick drum uh, 91 an EV uh, 868 nice and then the Audio Technica yeah the 4033 4033 and, uh, and a sub kick and a sub kick Options, man. You lots, have options. Lots of options. What if, what if you don't like one of those mics? That, that's Turn what happens off. when you hire a professional. <laughs> Turn it off. You, get, like it. you get options. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the cool thing. Lester is going to play this song twice. And that's probably it. That's probably all the more times he's going to play it. Because he's a beast. snare drum oh. it's ridiculous I'm just weird and accidentally hit the talk back button like with my elbow or something I don't I don't even really know what just happened my bad Awesome. Okay, so Pro Tools ran without an issue. Yeah, no hiccups. No Not hiccups. One. So so what does that actually mean here? That means I will be buying a HD native Thunderbolt. So, so. Gotta spend money to make money. Tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> get a pen, write this down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we're thinking that, or he's thinking, this is not my place. I'm in here acting like I'm uh, some sort of authority. <laughs> thinking that the expansion chassis that had the HD cards in it is actually what the issue was. Yes, that's absolutely what the issue was for me. I should. Somebody told me to send it back and try another one, but I don't have time, man. We ain't got time for that sort trying, of nonsense. I'm trying to track and get out of here. It's hard <laughs> enough to make a living at this. you got to be efficient. <laughs> that's right, man. Well, that's a wrap. Look at this beautiful day. It's so hot, though. i got to chill. That's a wrap. It was awesome. I'm hungry. This might be a mistake. It might be way too busy. But how do you pass up some Chick-fil-A? You don't. <laughs> now let's go back to my place. I got some stuff to talk about, which you already know what it is if you clicked on this video by the title. Let's go. Okay. How good is Chick-fil-A? It's the best. You can't go wrong with the spicy chicken. Just a regular spicy chicken. I don't need tomatoes and all that crap on it. Just give me a spicy chicken and a large cherry Coke. <laughs> How to crush the competition. Are you ready? I grew up super, super competitive. Everything that I did was a competition. I rode motocross, I was into BMX. It, everything was like super competitious driven. As I got older, I stayed that way. Everyone was my competition. Everyone was my competitor. I got a buddy who I actually told once, which is the way that I used to be, that if me and you leave somewhere and we both get in our own cars, but we're driving to the same destination, we're in a race, whether you know it or not. <laughs> so stupid. It's so stupid and immature. So how to crush the competition. I talk to artists constantly about other artists, wherever they're from, getting opportunities uh, that they think that they should have had. I see producers constantly get a little worked up over the fact that someone else is undercutting them or like there's so many producers and there's not enough work for us all. Here's the deal. That whole mindset, that whole approach is called a famine mentality. If you are upset about this particular artist getting the show that you think you should have got, that's called a famine mentality. If you are a producer and you are nervous about your comp competition and you think that there's not enough work for us all to go around and therefore Everyone is your competition. That's called a famine mentality. The issue with this, it's the general approach to life that there's not enough work for all of us. Whatever it is that you do, it's the idea, the concept, the mindset that there's not enough work for all of us. Nothing could be further from the truth. So I want to talk about this for a second because I, I want to help uh, as many people as I can with this. There is enough work for everyone. If you're annoyed with another artist getting a show that you think you should have gotten, you have to get out of that mindset. One of my favorite sayings is, a high tide raises all boats. And what that means is, the better we all do, the better we all do. So, if, you, if you're succeeding, and I'm succeeding, because everyone is doing good, then that means I'm doing better than I would be if everyone was not doing good. The problem with this competition thing is it's lonely. It's really lonely. And it gets you in the habit of approaching things in a mindset uh, that is not conducive to building relationships. You should be networking with these other artists. You should be networking with these other producers. You have no idea who's going to give you an opportunity in the future. That artist who got that show, they might blow up. They might need an opening act. You might be that opening act. If you're a producer, I'm a producer and a mix engineer. That means I get hired by artists and labels to produce and sometimes to mix. But I also get hired by other producers just to mix. And so if I view other producers as my competition, I'm automatically just 
hacking the ability to create relationships with the people that could potentially hire me. And in fact, I've seen it happen over and over. Just having that mindset, just approaching your day-to-day -day life with that mindset, it hinders you from building relationships. It hinders people from liking you. It stops all of your opportunities. You could boil most of this down to the number one rule in music. Be a good hang. If you're not a good hang, people won't want to be around you. And when people don't want to be around you, they don't want to hire you. But when you're a super nice, super genuine, thoughtful, caring, kind person, you can have opportunities given to you because you're a good hang, because you're thoughtful and kind, you're not combative, uh, you're not abrasive. Everyone loves to be around you. You will get more opportunities when you are that person than the person who is like, man, I can't believe that artist got that show. I can't believe it. I've got more followers on Instagram. I bring more people to the show. I'm a better singer. You're not going to get the opportunities when that is your attitude. You just won't. So the next thing about this whole mindset is you're spending more time focusing on the negative than on the positive. In life, in your career, in your industry, the more time you spend looking at the negative things, the more negative things you're going to find. And the more time you spend looking at the positive things, the more positive things you're going to find. This is a really important mindset shift. And the most important thing is that you cannot see opportunities if you're too busy looking at the negative. When you are worried about that other artist who got that show that you should have got, and when you're too worried about that other producer or that other mix engineer that got the gigs that you should have got, you're going to miss opportunities. There's going to be an opportunity present itself to you, and you're not even going to know it, and not even know that you missed an opportunity because you were so worried about looking at the negative. You have the ability to decide whether you are against other people or for other people, and that karma is going to come right back at you whichever way you decide to look at it. The first step to crush your competition is realizing, understanding, coming to grips with the fact that you don't have any competition. This is art. We're making art here. We're not playing football. We're not playing chess. There aren't winners and there aren't losers. As soon as you can come to terms with that and as soon as you can truly wholeheartedly believe that, the doors are going to start opening for you and you're not going to be approaching all these situations with animosity and with jealousy and with anger. The fact that you are now approaching these situations without all of that negative baggage is going to allow you to create re relationships that will allow you to get somewhere. It's worked for me. I know it will work for you. It's how Nashville runs, but really it's how every town runs, even if it's not the norm. I don't know that there's much more I can say about it. Go out there and make the best art that you can make.